the problem that I was worried about is we have recently moved ourselves into a high wage regime and we are relying on productivity which is supposed to grow two three percent a year and is actually not really happening and you have to put a lot of money to get a little bit of productivity so that is like very hard the other one is innovation which can leapfrog us to a lot of uh, growth but we don't have a culture of innovation because we are chasing all our innovator to silicon valley to london to australia and you are bringing a pro-white situation. We have this strange Pinkerton syndrome that believes that white are innovative. And I think we have to change that because we have to start to appreciate our own talent. I myself fail everything in school and I'm very useful outside my country and totally useless in my own country, which is a very strange way. Totally useless meaning not recognized in your own country. No, not use. I don't care if I recognize, but I'm not being exploited. <laughs> and that is a very sad thing because the use. Let's have a conversation. I'm, I'm looking forward to exploiting you. <laughs> Thank you very much. But one of the suggestions I think we need to do is to do something that we do very well, which is efficiency, and to recognize the ecosystem of talent here, not on one type of talent, but to build an ecosystem of talent so that we can hunt and pack. For example, if a GLC go out to build a township, it should bring along the SME and all the other people. The Korean did that, the Japanese did that, the Singaporean don't do that. Why? So if you can harness all the synapses, uh, synergy between all the uh, talents pool in Singapore, you not only get a, a low waste stages, you make use of all the people together, you also get cohesive society, you also have a proud nation, and maybe you should start to think like that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, two points I'd like to respond on. One is about uh, how we see the world, and, and I think we have to see the world as a very global, connected world, and that the platform we are, can succeed in is not just here. In fact, indeed, one of the reasons why I got much better uh, traction in Singtel in my career is because I chose to go overseas. Because if I'm going to compete with 12,000 people, I will have no chance to really be so different from them because everyone is trying to get the attention of their bosses and that promotion, whatever it is. So I chose to go to a place where nobody wanted to go, Ujung Pandang, Slow SC. And guess what? The CEO has to see me every time because I'm the only one there. When he comes down, he has to see me, you know, then he gets to know me and then he gets to know who I am and what I can bring. And, and that becomes a habit. Every three years, I go up, go up somewhere because I know that's where the opportunity is. So the world, the Singtel did not benefit me, benefit from what I think I could give when I was in Singtel in Singapore. But they certainly noticed me when I was overseas. And I, I, don't, I make no excuses for it. I actually love it. And my children grew up overseas with me, with my family. And, and, and instead of saying, for, for myself, my, I'm, I'm, I'm a diehard optimist. Instead of telling myself, oh, why do people ignore me? Why do people don't know? I say, no, I'm going to make a, make a difference. I do something else, and I'm going to make a big difference. And go back and make sure whatever I do, when I leave, I'll be missed. But, I mean, as a minister, looking at policies, uh, as individuals, we can do yeah. this, sir. Yeah. But I think what Jack is talking yeah. about as, as a system, yeah. So, Shouldn't there be some yeah. mindset shift? So the same thing I would, I would encourage the young people, that you must, the opportunities are much, much bigger than what you see within. You may get your skills, you may get your passport, your CV in Singapore, but don't limit yourself to where you are. The world is so connected today. It used to cost so much to call Singapore. Nowadays, we can go on YouTube and connect every day. Oh, not sure, not YouTube, Skype. Skype, Skype. <laughs> Skype connect every day. And you, do, you don't really miss that person except the touch and so forth. You can fly almost everywhere. It's so, so cheap to do so. So it opens up a totally new experience for the young and opportunities for them. Because what advantage we have in our system as a Singaporean, the moment you show your Singapore passport, they trust you. That's the branding we have and we should really use. Is and your, I encourage is, is this. your question answered? No. So, so my yeah. point is exactly, you have been exploited, so to speak, because you're from Singapore. When I go, for example, for my foreign affairs work, for example, you know, people want to see me. I mean, ministers want to see me. Not because, not because I'm another foreign affairs minister, but because I know I'm from Singapore. And that value adds. And that's something I'm very proud of. 
and I want everyone who has this passport, use it, use it, and don't feel that it is something uh, just because they don't succeed or don't do as well here, to, to go somewhere and be proud that you did this because you are a Singaporean. Mm -hmm.